Karloff, you're chomping at the bit about Dion and the Colorado Buffaloes, the no, big no. showdown against USC it's this not, weekend. It's not a take, it's a warning. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. A warning. It, just be careful. If you're on the streets of Colorado, of Boulder, be careful because you're going to be people jumping all over the place off the Colorado bandwagon. Oh, that massive. Oh, oh it is going to be. It's going to be an exodus like you've never seen. Uh, the 12 million viewers. Biblical? Yeah, everyone is going to get tired of this Dion story uh, because Dion has raised the expectation so high. At a certain point, all these new fans are going to be like, "Well, wh- why am I getting so into this if they're not a competitive team?" So they have to be a competitive team. And when I say competitive team, this is Dion. Dion has raised the bar. If he's not going to win a title in the next five years in Colorado, then what are we doing here? What, what's the point of all, all this attention and all this hype? He has set up very high bar, and I think that that's a very dangerously high bar because it's hard to win a national title. Okay, but you have other coaches who are all-time coaches who yeah. we respect, who we think are great, who have not won national titles. Not in college football. Who? Uh, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Ryan oh, Day, Jim Harbaugh, uh, Brian Kelly, there Ryan are guys- Day, Ryan Day is in big trouble in big Ohio trouble. State. They just won in Notre Dame, and Stu's wearing his Irish T-shirt today. Stu, I don't know why you're doing that, but anyway, I, I just think support the team. <laughs> well, at least those, okay, those, those guys, guys are good coaches. They got who are to life a national title games, except okay. for Harbaugh. Okay, those are good coaches who are life for coaches and. Guys who have built respectable programs, and just because they haven't won a national title doesn't mean that people don't think they're great coaches. Are you seeing a national Lincoln bandwagon? Riley is another one. Is Ryan Day leading every single sports center today? Are people all talking about, let's tune in for Ryan Day? Well, no, he keeps this, calling out Lou Holtz. <laughs> this, uh, well, that was actually pretty good, Ryan Day. <laughs> but I'm just saying, all this whirlwind of excitement around Dion, I think, unfortunately, it calls for a lot of success. The Fab Five in Michigan, they've been yep. compared a lot to the Fab Five a culture-changing program in the early 90s in Michigan. They made it to two national titles in the two years of the yes. Fab Five existence. So Dion has and to have that win, kind of... Say, and we it, still talk yeah. about them 30 years later. Okay, D, let me let me amend my take. Dion has to get to at least the Final Four. Uh, well, otherwise, it's going to be 12. Yeah, no, oh, but no, he's got to... He's got to go... He's got to get to the title game. Win, win games in the college football And even playoff. so, I don't think the 12 is a guarantee because we don't really know what this program is. Is I mean I think he has a great chance. He's got a lot of advantages, but Going I do to the think Big Twelve next year. I just think that he talks such a big game that he's got to deliver a big game. So I think in the short term, if they get blown out by USC, which I don't think is a guarantee at all, if they get blown out in the short term, I think the interest is going to fall fast. I think that bus is going to empty out quickly. He'll still be very interesting, yeah. but I don't think the the celebrity list that we have for this week's game. I don't think it'll be anything like that at the end of the season. Unless they keep winning, because I think those three that three and zero start is what really kicked this into high gear. Yeah, it's like the best thing that could have happened to them, but maybe the worst because now the expectations are so high. But I, I still think you're going to get the celebrities. First of all, Dion's a cultural phenomenon. He has been since he played a two sport athlete at that high level. How he was high stepping, had his own dances, like all of the stuff that we've been watching. Dion, basically my whole life, Dion Sanders has been a famous person in my life. He already brings that with him, which is the baggage that he calls Louis Vuitton, right? That he brings to the program. So there's, he's always interesting just on, on his own. And now changing this culture at Colorado, I don't think there's like a clock that's ticking on Dion. I think he's forever interesting because there's so many different ways that this story can play out. It could just be success at Colorado. It could be him going to a bigger program. I mean, take it over at Alabama. Take it over one of these bigger at Texas A&M. Who knows? It could be the NFL. It's not inconceivable he could be the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Like, we have no idea where this is all going to go, and that's what still makes this interesting. Meanwhile, I know Shador is getting knocked around and has taken 22 sacks so far in four games, and that is not good. They have to keep him upright if they have a prayer against USC, which, most likely, you know, USC is the number one scoring offense in the country. Caleb Williams is on a heater right now. And if they have a prayer, Shador's got to be upright. I think Shador still does go to the NFL, and we watch him on the next level. Yeah. Like, this, this, we don't know how this is all going to end with Dion. First of all, I think he's crazy if he leaves Colorado. Why would you leave this? It's it's sh- he's shown that Colorado is a perfect place to attract Hollywood talent. It's really close. <laughs> Everyone, lo- it's the hottest like state in the country. One of them in Tennessee, basically. Uh, I think Colorado's perfect. He's going to the Big Twelve. Do you know how easy it is to get to the playoffs out of the Big Twelve? Oklahoma did it for a decade, yeah. And then they got you know basically boat race once they got to the Final Four. But Dion's going to kill those. He will not leave Colorado. Why would you go to the SEC? 
Why? Why would he do that? Why? Why get jump into that pool when you have your own pool that you completely own? Uh, See, money. <laughs> I mean, money. I don't think he can, no. Like I, I don't know. Colorado when they signed Dion yeah. even said like they were like, "Do you have the money?" They're like, "We don't have it yet. We'll have it." Like, "Hey, can I pay you next Thursday?" Like that was the sort of vibe with Colorado where. Can you imagine, like, A&M? They could basically, if they wanted to, they could pay Jimbo Fisher $80 million to go away. Right. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, if if they if he goes to A&M, then it's just going to be another setup for disappointment because I just that'll that probably... A for instance. No, it's a great, yeah. for instance, I honestly think, I think they should watch A&M carefully because A&M could steal their offensive coordinator any day now. I, that's the one I would do. It's Bobby know, Petrino now at A&M. Well, I'm just saying, once they fire Jimbo, Sean Lewis oh, yeah, is going to yeah. look that's awfully true. attractive at Colorado. Yes. He's so, going to get a bigger job. Well, I wonder, or, but there is a loyal to Dion. I think Dion's got a great formula here at Colorado. I don't think he needs to change this at all. But I do think that he's bringing in all these fans who, who probably aren't the world's biggest college football fans who are going to be like, well, we're going to win a title. Like, Dion's the best, right? So we're going to go 11 and 1 and be in the title game. I do think there are some fans like that who don't quite understand what a five and seven season could do to all this. Okay. I, I think that if we're talking about people who now just love Dion or love yeah, what yeah, Colorado's yeah. doing, I'm not going to call those people casuals. I don't think that's right. Cause they could be big time college fans. I'm going to call them bandwagoners. The people who have jumped on the bandwagon. I think they're on it for what Dion represents. I think they're on it for a guy who came in and turned around a program and a culture right away. And somebody who, is doing things a bit differently. And I know Dion says, I'm old school, I'm old school. Well, depends on your definition of old school. And he has a certain flash and panache and confidence about him that inspires hope clearly and that people want to follow. Right, And, but and you, I think those people aren't leaving. Well, I disagree. And here's why. Because you can't say all those things. And I don't think this is definitely going to happen. But if you're... Four and eight, you can't say, you better catch me now. Like, you better catch me now before I figure this out is only going to work for so long. Like, you have to have yeah. a strong winning record at some point or all those words are going to ring hollow. Well, I guess here's the question and the rebuttal to that. I think Colorado, he's made Colorado a appealing destination. Sure. He's already shown he'll go into the transfer portal and he'll turn over the whole team. Right. Don't you think that he's going to continue to have all this great talent that's going to want to come to Colorado? I think he can figure it out. No, they could be really good, but I think this formula of turning over the whole team is not necessarily easy to win a title doing that. Like, you have a lot of new guys. I I think that it's going to be interesting to see how he plays this. Like, is he going to build an offensive line and defensive line? You can't get 70 new players every year and build anything. No, I know, but it's going to be really weird. So the other thing, too, is... College football is a very reactionary sport. Other teams are going to like try and replicate his formula too and go heavier. I mean, Lincoln Riley. Yeah, but they don't have brought, like the panache that. Well, I mean, USC brought in a gigantic recruiting class, uh, yeah, transfer class. Because Lincoln Riley had a high profile, right? And it only worked to a certain extent. It it hasn't been proven that you yet. I don't think maybe I'm wrong, but you can't necessarily bring in 70, 70 transfer portals and have an instant team. So there's I, no excuse not to try now. Well, George, I mean, I don't. Georgia definitely uses transfers, but I don't think they. You know, it seems like there there's a mix. You have to build a team as well, and also Dion will be the first to tell you. You clearly have to build the trenches. I'm not sure that that's necessarily. I think a transfer portal. I think a wide receiver. I think a Jordan Addison. Yeah. I think of uh, Travis Hunter. I don't really think of like the meat and potatoes thing. Whatever Georgia's doing. Like, that's the thing. Like, as good as he gets, like, is he going to be able to beat Georgia? Is he going to be able to beat when Alabama figures it out? Is he going to be able to beat Ohio State and Michigan? Like, there's a, there's a lot of mountain left to climb. And I feel like some people act like Dion's already at that top of that mountain. Well, I think Dan Lanning, the Oregon coach, my ducks, of course, as I'm on the bandwagon this year for Oregon, <laughs> picked a heck of a year, by the way. Uh, Dan Lanning, I thought, summed it up when he – talked about Dion's impact and this is after the game after they beat them 42 to 6. I'm also grateful and and can clearly acknowledge that the attention that we got this Saturday in large part was due to Dion and what he's doing to college football. And if anybody can't see what he's done for college football and how he's bringing excitement to college football, you're crazy. Um, he's done a lot for the game. He's he's building something over there. I think that's really really clear. The dude's the king of the sport right now. And so anything about transfer portal or he's going to have the pick I think people are are really they're buying what he's selling. Clearly, do you and, really, do, when you say he's the king of the sport, what does that mean? I think that he, if you had all the coaches in one room, like a big coaching convention for college football, I think Dion's the most popular guy in that room. Definitely, but does that make him the king? 
Yeah, I do. I think the king of the sport is whoever's holding that glass egg. Is that what they have? Oh, that uh, crystal football? Yeah, I they think... They don't have that anymore. I think there's a reason Nick Saban is... You know, Nick Saban, because he has multiple ones of those. I, honestly, Dion might be the most popular. He's certainly going to be the most covered. But I think that doesn't, it's different. You got to win a title. I mean, Coach K is not Coach K because he's got a funny last spell. Like, <laughs> you got to win a title at some point. And I think Dion, when I say the clock's running, like, Dion's got to, he keeps raising the bar, raising the bar, raising the bar. At a certain point, like, this has got to work. I mean, Fat Five, if you want to make that comparison, they made the national title game the first two years. That's yeah. incredible. Is Dion anywhere close to that? No, but they didn't win. Yeah, they, but so they made what? the title I mean, game. They didn't win. Making the national title game in college basketball, Dion, his team might be 500. Who knows? Brian Kelly got to the national title game yeah. with Notre Dame, and they got destroyed by Alabama. Right. People still love Brian Kelly. He's still right. got $100 million to go to LSU. Like, yeah, I mean, Jim Harbaugh went to the college football playoff and lost to TCU. People still think it hold him in, in high esteem. Jim Harbaugh had to take a pay cut in Michigan just within two years. Two years ago. Jim, yeah, they're in high esteem, but Brian, I wouldn't say Brian Kelly is anywhere <laughs> near what Dion is right now. No one's like, oh my God, I can't wait to see what Brian Kelly says. He next. was the flavor of the month last year, though. I mean, he was like, he was okay. It was the high profile Everyone, guy who switched programs. You're the you're the head coach of Notre Dame for over a decade. You are a huge deal. Everyone knows Brian Kelly's a good coach, but there's not there's nothing in common with Brian Kelly's stature and what Deion Sanders is doing well, right now. Of course not, because Brian Kelly didn't play in the NFL and Major League Baseball. And yeah, I mean, I I, I don't think there's a real comparison there. What Deion's doing is unparalleled in college football coaching. There's never been anything like this, and no one's ever come onto the scene like that. So yes, he's the most popular in the room, but at a certain point, he's got to be the winningest. That's I mean, Jerry Jones is the most popular owner. He hasn't won a Lombardi in 26 years. So I think that is, and at a certain point, people and he still stop has all the power. Stop, but people will stop listening. Actually, that's a that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> you're proving, you're proving my point on that one, right? But Dion, Dion talks like he's going to win it all. He really does. Like, and he, do you he, believe that? He believe, and he believes for sure that he's going to win it all. If he was sitting here right now, he would say, "Maggie, you're wrong. I have to win a title in three years, or I'm going to be disappointed in myself." He is. He's got his eyes on the prize, and he's telling everybody about it. That's why he has to do it. I think is the poll question today is the clock ticking on Dion to win a national title? Well, I think At it, Maggie and Pearl. No, I think you have to be like, if Dion doesn't win a national title within five years, is he a success or a failure?